Hello and welcome back and today I want to compare two popular NASs in 2020. Now I say I'm talking about two popular NASs for 2020, I'm actually going to talk about two NASs that are nearly two years old, but even now in the early stages of 2020 these are two NASs that are still being looked at. So I wanted to revisit these two because with every passing year Synology and QNAP have put so much into these devices and they still keep being at the tippity top of people's potential buys. I want to talk about the DS918 Plus from Synology and the TS453BE from QNAP. Now, once again, these are not new NASs. Even though loads of NASs have been released from both of these brands since they were originally debuted at the closing stages of 2017 and early 2018, there's still no avoiding that these two are still two of the best NASs for home users looking at a 4-bay RAID-enabled NAS solution out there that they've ever put out for a long time. From Synology's point of view, it was a, they went for a chip that they'd never used before in the CPU department and arriving with NVMe SSD cache. On the case of the QNAP, we were looking at a NAS that arrived with a PCIe upgrade slot, dual HDMI ports, and that same CPU that we just talked about it, although they got there first, let's be honest. And despite the release of Intel dual core fourth generation Celeron CPUs and bigger and in kind of in many ways more powerful NASs from both of these brands being released in the interim, these two are still great at an excellent price versus hardware point for you. And that's why you found this video, because you're looking for these NASs as much as everyone else is. Although we are probably going to see a follow-up to both of these devices later in 2020. No doubt there will be a Synology DS920 Plus follow-up, and the, Q the QNAP series, the 453 series, will no doubt have a follow-up too, likely before the end of the summer. But even then, these two NASs are still going to remain available, and chances are at a much more affordable price than the brand new unit. So let's talk about these two NASs and hopefully find out which one deserves your data. I have gone into far more detail comparing these two on a hardware level in the past, in previous videos, and I'm not going to talk too much about hardware in this video, largely because... The hardware is the thing that's changed the least, obviously, because you would expect the hardware specifications of these devices to be changed all but none at all um, in a, a two-year period. It's the software that has changed from both of these brands that I'll get to in a bit. But let's focus on that hardware. So, CPU, as mentioned, is the Intel J series, the J3455, a quad-core 1.5 gigahertz processor that can be burst that's increased in um uh, uh, power up to 2.3 gigahertz clock speed both having the same cpu means in terms of that hardware department at the very least there isn't a lot of difference in terms of memory the qnap arrives with either two or eight gig oh, sorry two or four gig of ddr3 l memory and this is the b E version. There is a non-BE version known as just the B, but that one arrives with a bunch of other features and functionality that a number of you just didn't find utilization of, hence the existence of the more affordable BE device and the comparison. So that arrives with either 2 or 4 gig that could be upgraded officially to 8 gig, whereas the Synology device arrives with either 4 or 8 gig of DDR3L memory by default, and that is the official maximum memory. Now, with such a small difference between them and the fact that the 4 gig version of the not, um, the 453BE is still lower in price than the 918 4 gig, we're not going to talk too much about price differences between them on those internal hardware specifications. But in, term of, in terms of external hardware specifications, that's where a number of you may fall on either side of the wavelength here. The QNAP arrives with a, a predominantly plastic chassis. It's got an LCD panel on the front there with a USB one-touch copy button on the front and four bays and plastic trays of storage. You can populate this device with single drives or fully um, populate the device with up to the very latest 16 terabyte SATA hard drives. Same goes with the Synology, plastic chassis, plastic trays, up to the latest hard drives. Although the front mounted USB button doesn't have a one, one touch copy button, that USB can be utilized for automated USB backups just by inserting a drive. 
Jettle chassis design uh, does divide a number of you. The Synology chassis design is more, more cubist, and it's got the Synology ventilated panel on the side. The QNAP, on the other hand, arrives with that blue and black plastic chassis there with a the removable front panel. Uh, but the ventilation is more kind of standard, kind of slot design. Uh, now, if we look at the rear of these devices, that's where we see a lot of difference in hardware. The Synology arrives with two uh, LAN ports, one GBE LAN port on the rear, uh, additional USB port and an eSATA port for expanding your device from the four bays of storage to a further five and total nine bays of storage via an eSATA connected expansion device known as the DX513. The QNAP on the other hand arrives with um, four more USB 3 ports, it also arrives with two LAN ports, a speaker, audio in and out, two HDMI ports on the rear, both 1.4B, uh, that's standard uh, 60 frames per second 1080p or 30 frames per second 4K, and a very interesting area, a PCIe upgrade slot. Now that slot allows you to increase network connections and thereby putting in a card inside that will add 10 gigabit ethernet, 5 gigabit ethernet and 2.5 gigabit ethernet options as well as M2 SSD cache PCIe cards that allow you to increase the storage and caching options of the QNAP. Now there are combination cards in their QM2 series which have got M2, NVMe and standard SATA SSD bays and increased network interface cards or NICs for that 10 GBE, 5 GBE and 2.5 GBE, always useful. Now those cards will cost you extra, ranging from as little as 50 pounds all the way up to 200 pounds for the more fully fledged multi-port cards. Now the Synology doesn't have a PCIe upgrade slot. It does have those NVMe SSD cache bays, which means along with the four bays of storage, you can add SSDs for hugely improving read and write speeds. Now, there are two schools of thought on this. One school of thought that that's bloody brilliant. You've got NVMe SSD cache bays by default, and the prices between these two devices is so similar that you kind of like that that's included. On top of that, internal operation speeds are vastly improved by SSD bays inside both NVMe and standard SSDs if you so choose. However, you are going to be limited externally to 2 gigabit Ethernet. So do bear in mind the performance benefits presented to you from SSD caching, whatever the brand, will always be restricted externally, so that's all the connected users, by the number of network ports. And that's the other school of thought. The SSD caching stops being useful if you're limited by your external interaction, your upload and download with the device. Now, I, once again, this isn't about which is better, it's about which one is best suited to your storage needs. And hopefully those hardware distinctions, you can choose your priority because um, as I've talked in previous videos on the other YouTube channel with Eddie the Web Guy, I talk about how the Synology is dedicated to network and, e and internet access as a priority. Whereas the QNAP has that same priority, but also a level priority to local access over things like HDMI, USB, and more. They've changed um, their kind of structure to be both local network and internet with Synology relying heavily on internet and network only. And I say rely, it's better to say that they are targeting that market a great deal better. So in terms of hardware, if you're looking for something with even a hint of local access, or the ability to add 10 GBE or increase those network interface ports, the QNAP is kind of your go-to choice on a hardware level. Whereas the Synology won't give you that area of growth, but does give you growth in other ways. And which is this is where we move on to the software area of these two devices. Now, once again, I have made this comparison between these two NASs at least two times in the last two years. But the reason I want to talk about it more today is, unlike those videos, I really want to talk about the software. Because both QTS and DSM are vastly evolved over the last few years, with DSM in its 6.2.2 version, with the DSM 7 beta on the horizon, and Synology arriving with QTS 4.4.1. And to say these two pieces of software are fully featured is doing them a massive understatement. 
these two are these two NAS brands produce software that is genuinely unrivaled by any other brand in the field of network attached storage and I'd say um, network storage period whether you're talking about the big boys HP NetApp and that sort of thing or the low tier stuff that are brainless storage drives largely like the WD my books and more now let's talk about QNAP first. QTS um, 4.4.1 has a huge degree of third-party app support, but as well as that, a lot of first-party app support. That's what's changed a lot since my original videos comparing these two. Originally, when I compared these two devices, I gave Synology the home run win on the software department because DSM is be beautiful. Their first-party apps and some of their proprietary innovative apps are incredible with Synology Mail, Synology Calendar, and Synology Chat and more. But I'll get to their side in a bit. The QNAP applications for the first party in the last two years have been astronomical. Everything from Hybrid Backup Sync 3, which is by far the best backup and synchronization tool I have ever used from any NAS brand. On top of that, things like QMaggie for its um, fo facial recognition and AI-powered photo cataloging has managed to take something that Synology did first with Moments and just do it that little bit more with file folder lever ac access and better recognition of things and faces. On top of that, you've got um, support of third-party applications too, but on a first-party level with increased Windows ACL level controls, uh, improved wind, um, virtualization and container station controls, and improvements in uh, Linux Station 2. What QNAP have done is solidify their support of third-party apps, but at the same time, massively invest in their first party tools two years ago we talked about surveillance station from them now we talk about qvr pro with this device arriving with eight camera licenses which is huge and innovations in things like qvr door qvr face and qvr human all of these are things that are coming out of qes 2020 at the start of this year that are telling us more and more about how qnap is really investing in those first party apps now there is still disparity between the innovations on those apps there's a few apps that still need a little bit of work and there are areas that then they haven't quite touched on they have invested as a brand in lots of peripheral technology as well as innovating in the field of 10GBE, but that software has, you know, is vastly improved as it is compared with two years ago. I still have to say in terms of software, my love still goes to the Synology because the Synology DSM platform is still the better of the two. QNAP have closed the gap incredibly, but... Synology's support of things like Synology Chat, Active Backup Sync, uh, um, Active Backup Suite, sorry, um, their support of things like Synology Calendar, Synology um, Office, and all those proprietary applications that are designed to replace things like Skype, like Microsoft Office and Microsoft 365, to replace ArcServe and replace your third, uh, the apps that you're using in your environment. And when you buy a Synology NAS, in include all those applications so you don't have to use Skype anymore. All your data and stuff can live within the NAS with Synology um, Chat. Synology Mail is probably one of the best mail handling applications I've ever seen. Don't get me wrong, QNAP are catching up fast with support of things like um, the, um, uh, the Google Studio and Windows 365 support in BoxSafe from QNAP and innovations happening within their surveillance platform too. They're catching up quick, and maybe a year from now, the so on the software level, they are going to be neck and neck. And if you're an Android Windows user, I used to say that QNAP was definitely the brand to go for because you would meld better with that platform. But now the two of them are becoming very, very similar with Synology taking a slight move away from the Mac-related ethos that has dominated their platform for a long time. And what that means is, whereas in the past, if you're a Mac user, I'd say, go for the Synology. Now, I would say, think about it. Check out QNAP as well, because of their support of things like Thunderbolt, and their support of the Mac platform in general has increased substantially in two years. So now, choosing between these two brands is no longer a black and white situation of Synology, Mac, QNAP, Windows. Now, there's a hell of a lot of grey area between these two. So, 
on a hardware level, I keep I do maintain if you're going to deal with the NAS in a more direct you to it fashion without taking advantage of things like network switches, then definitely the 453BE between these two is the one for you. And if not, Synology is probably your best bet. But in terms of software, what you really need to work at is what you're going to use the device for. Because the user interfaces are now almost identically smooth, almost identically user-friendly, and almost identically user-friendly. The DSM-7 platform's arriving soon, and it's getting a little bit more analytical, which is something we always wanted from Synology. Stop hiding the tough information and the tough decisions from us as the end user. QNAP, on the other hand, still provide that information, but they've improved the way they show it. So in terms of software, still right now, Synology have the edge, but just by a pinch. And if you're looking for something that you're going to be accessing via your browser more so than any other means, chances are this is very much the one for you because Synology's client apps aren't quite as impressive as a number of their um, browser GUI based applications. Whereas QNAP has a better range of more intuitive client applications for Windows and Mac to install locally. And of course, with those local access options too, as well as with the innovations throughout the last year or so, I would say for them, if you're looking at using your third-party software or using your third-party platforms and want to use client applications, then QNAP may well be the one for you. And of course, both of these platforms have a huge support for migrating and synchronization with cloud platforms too. With QNAP at the moment and their uh, hybrid mount software and virtual JBot software, do check out my videos, and Synology incorporating a number of those features of functionality in DSM when it comes very, very soon. But right now, that's the choice between the, these two devices. Do you want to go with direct access or network internet access? And as important as everything else is in terms of applications, it, if you do, if you want to do things your way and you don't want to change the way you do things, another reason to go for the QNAP. But if you want to be shown how to do things, if you want to be told a way to do things because you don't have one, go for the Synology because they've worked out a way of doing things that is first class. And otherwise, thank you so much for watching, uh, watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And whichever one of these two you choose to buy, do let me know in the comments. And do check out my software overviews because, of course, this has been very centric about these two NASs. And these two brands are a lot bigger than that. And watching a few of my other videos will help you choose between these brands more than just between these two NASs. Thank you so much for watching. Click like if you enjoyed it. Click subscribe to learn more. And I'll see you next time.